technology. Wow. I'm glad I do these videos because I have a video interview tomorrow. Oh, wait a second. Oops, I'm running. Hello, and welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast, where I am the one and only true hobo of Daytona Beach, as evident, well, not by my shirt, but a hobo shirt. The hobo of Daytona Beach, Hobo Tom. Again, remember, I already made my major announcement. I'm not going to hark on it too much. But ladies, this could be you. Oh, wait a second. That is from NXT. Rena Gonzalez. That was the one day I got my se I got a selfie with her. I'm learning how to use my cell phone. Cell phones are, I guess, are good. Technology. Technology is good. And I'm here to talk a little bit about some wrestling, because that's what you on the YouTube desire. And today, um, I've already kind of gone over my major announcements. I'm not going to belabor those points. So I'm going to talk about SmackDown Live, and then talk and have a little break. And go into some mixed match challenge. So let's start off with SmackDown. SmackDown is so much fun. Um, it starts off kind of a little bit of a recap and then goes right to the contract signing between Flair, Becky, uh, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and Asuka. And for the most part, it's just Charlotte Flair and Becky arguing amongst each other. It's like they're totally ignoring Asuka. Don't ignore Asuka though. Then she gets in and she gets involved. Asuka will not be ignored. And this, of course, after um, Asuka finally interjects herself and signs the contract, because at TLC, which I guess is a 16th, still, I don't think it's. I have to double check that. I don't think. No, it has to, it has to be the sixteenth. Sixteenth. Next week are the semifinals for the mixed match challenge, and the mixed match challenge take finals takes place on TLC. I just turned my fan off. It's getting a little chilly in here. That's okay. I'm I'm a hobo. I'm used to dealing with weather. I don't care about weather that much. Weather well doesn't care about me. But so we have our opening match of. Woo! Charlotte Flair and Asuka versus Mandy Rose and, and Boo Sonya Deville. And when, when Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville came out to their promo, they got wadded. They did the cadence. They deserve to be wadded. That's all that has to be said. During the match, it was, it was actually a really good, good opening match. Um, again, I'll probably be at the Raw, when they come to Orlando, I'm burnt the front of my lip on my soup. Ooh. But I'll probably be at the Raw in Orlando on January 7th. Again, you'll get to see some live action footage there. Because I'm not going out to Dade City. Oh, because that would be the 7th, too. Ha! Whatever. So again, Asuka, again, classic wrestling. Again, she can wrestle, very classical style. Mandy Rose, however, has like a Triple H esque high knee. That looked good. Becky's just sitting there ringside watching, just there with her belt on her shoulder. She's holding it, kind of swaying back and forth in the chair. She's enjoying herself. She has, a, she has the true front row seats. Especially security's not going to. Take her out if she takes videos. Good security. And Mandy Man Rose has a little booty on her. These are things I'm beginning to notice now that I don't have a girlfriend. Mandy has, has a little, little cute little tushy. <laughs> you know, you're a hobo. And an old hobo when you use words like tushy. Um, eventually, Charlotte Flair did get the hot tag. Woo! Woo's all over. 
um, until there was a flare miscue where initially Mandy Rose pulled Asuka out of the ring or, or from the ring to the ground. Mandy Rose got on the ring apron. Asuka pulled her down, jumped up onto the ring apron, and then Charlotte booted Asuka in the face, I guess thinking that she was Mandy Rose. And then Charlotte got into a pinning predicament. And Asuka just delivered a basement dropkick on her. There was no miscommunication there, folks. Woo! Oh, and... Woo! I'm Charlotte. Side, side booby. Wow, I can say words I haven't said in a long time. I don't know. So it's still nice to have a girlfriend, though. Again, all you females in Daytona Beach, this guy's available. But back to this, back to the seriousness of pro wrestling. <laughs> I like that, the seriousness of pro wrestling. This was a cheeseburger match. It was fun. It was enjoyable. Next? Oh, wow. It was a triple threat match. So probably next week they'll have the other partner come in. It was Jay Uso versus Xavier Woods versus Cesaro. Wow. I mean, there were great counters, great setups, uh, both by uh, Woods and Jay Uso. Cesaro um, got involved early, just got beat up. Said, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go tranquilo outside, be with my partner, regroup, get myself together. And then when Cesaro came back in, oh he just he took out both of them. Uh, Cesaro is so good. I forget what he was called in the indie circuit. Darn, he has some good matches. And for a short time, this felt very PWG-esque. Um, it felt like a Chikara ma match when like, they would be in like gymnasiums. It was just that much energy. Um, they, they'd throw someone against the ropes <clears throat> and then chase after him. Or you hit someone and you just you go, go against the ropes. ropes and, oh, it was so much fun. Uh, Cesaro pulled out like an airplane swing. That was amazing. I mean, Jey Uso was Jey Uso became a one man super super kick party. This match was so fun and so enjoyable. Even though there was an AJ Styles match, this gets the filet mignon rating. It was so well booked. It didn't seem botchy. I think there might have been like one or one or two like weird things, but nothing, nothing. The thing is, nothing took away from this match. So, and it was amazing. They gave it time. It just seems SmackDown is the superior product. I mean, I know they're going to Fox. Geez, next year. Already? Wow. And Fox wants to, for it to be more sports-oriented. They're doing that. The storylines are there. They make sense. But it's all driven by the competition factor. I like that. I like that when they say, well, you're the number one contender. You're the number two contender. You're the number three contender. So you have to fight. You have to earn your way. Or, <laughs> we'll have the evil authority say we will make you the number one if you sign your soul. Well, not sign your soul to the devil, but say, if, if you do our dirty work, we'll make sure you'll get yours. Again, again, that was really good. Then you have Daniel Bryan on Miss TV. And he's now full heel. And he's saying, Fickle! 
to the crowd. And AJ Styles come out. Um, cowardly Daniel Bryan, the cowardly heel, and the cowardly after opportunistic heel, Daniel Bryan, um, throws Miz into the, into the way. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I don't know what I don't know where Miz gets his coat. That's one darn big zipper. Oh, a couple other things. <laughs> when Mandy Rose came out, you could hear audibly. Go, go get him, girl. She has fans, I guess, in Texas. I forget where she's built out of. I forget if it's Texas or California. There was some guy with an Al Generico shirt there. And during the triple threat match, the crowd was chanting, we want pancakes. So he gave him pancakes. And I think Corey Graves made the comment, oh, well, if, 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 this, if, these fan, if um, the Texas Longhorns had hands like these fans at catching pancakes, they would have won the Big 12 championship. And Tom Phillips just goes, boomer sooners. It's goofy stuff. That's, I, I, don't, I like them. They're goofy. Uh, and then we have the uh, Jeff Hardy Randy Orton match. Again, another really darn good match. And there were delete chants. They're still delete, 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 delete. I mean, Jeff goes after Randy Orton. Um, kind of getting old though. They've had this match a couple times, and after seeing what Randy Orton's done to him. Mainly with a whole ear hole thingy twist with screwdriver. Ugh. And Jeff Hardy dropping from the cage. This match kind of felt flat. Don't get me wrong, it was a very good match. When you see it over and over again, and it's just kind of, and it's not really escalating, I guess. Jeff Hardy is getting a little bit more aggressive. And again, he drops Orton the, onto the table. Um, then there was a good back and forth. Um, there was no RKO. There was a counter. There was no twist of fate counter there. And then all of a sudden, Samoa Joe shows up on the Triton Talk. <laughs> he has his second job working as a bartender at some local Texas bar. I guess being a pro wrestler doesn't pay that well. The Samoa Joe's when he's not wrestling, he's he's being a barback or bartender, or at least at a bar. Maybe it was his. He was told to have a day off, and he wanted to go have a have a beer. Just have beer in Texas. I don't know. I've heard funny stories about bars in Texas. I'll save that for another of those. After I show you what hobo bar looks like, especially the Christmas hobo bar. Oh yes, and then probably next. You can hear some singing from this guy, starting with a hobo song. One of my favorites. Um, so Samoa Joe does distract Jeff Hardy enough where he gets where Jeff Hardy gets hit by an RKO, and then there was a there was a public service announcement by Samoa Joe. I forget. Oh wow, I forget what it was, but I know it was drink responsibly. Don't drink and drive. And and drink the good stuff. It was good though. This leads to the main event. Oh, I think I also saw a Lufisto sign in the crowd. That was weird. I guess she is from I forget if she's built from Texas or not. I wonder if she's still wrestling for Impact. So she's also good. I don't know. I'll have to do some research. And look that up. Then you have the main event. Oh, the Randy Orton match. It was a cheeseburger match. And the only reason why I say it's a cheeseburger match is because I've seen better out of the two. It wasn't bad. It just didn't live up to, to what it was. I mean, you have such an amazing Hell in a Cell match, and everything else kind of falls flat. Samoa Joe again did get involved, so he's te teasing his DNA feud with Jeff Hardy. I should get a new mic for Christmas. 
Man, if I had a girlfriend, I'd get that snowball microphone. Good stuff. 40 bucks, it better be good. I think this thing costs. If that. Next, we have AJ Styles versus The Miz. So good is AJ Styles. AJ Styles! We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. AJ Styles is that good. And my camera just froze up because I was doing motions too quickly. So this is going to be a funky video. At least this part. Is. But again, it was such a good match. Good stuff. Classic AJ Styles match. AJ Styles can take a bump. He can, he can give a shot. Uh, he, he can get dropped on the outside. Then he then tossed Miz to the outside. Again, which is really good. I mean, the Miz is also so good. Daniel Bryan was there uh, doing ring commentary. And all it seemed that he was talking about was like vegetarian, vegan stuff and kicking guys in the groin and, and the crowd being fickle. Fickle. Sounds like an old man. You're fickle. Old man Brian. <laughs> oh, wait. Could old man Daniel Bryan be a rival to old Tom? I don't know. Maybe for a New Year's special. We'll see. I wonder if they have Daniel Bryan. They have to. They have some sets. But again, um... AJ Styles, again, after being distracted by Daniel Bryan, gets hit with a skull-crushing finale. One of the few people to ever kick out of the skull-crushing finale, though. Um, he kicks out, and then he gets... A Graves is just so heel-centric, too. Just agreeing with everything Daniel Bryan says. And, oh, yeah. By the... Daniel Bryan was talking about like carbon emissions and, and driving a bus to work and stuff. No, AJ Styles, he drives Mustang. I've seen it. AJ Styles, you're the man. And that was the that was when leaving Amway Center with my girlfriend, and on the way out, I say, "Hey, sweetie, look." That looks like AJ Styles. <laughs> wonder who that is. Oh, w w wait a second. That sign says performer's entrance. That looks like AJ Styles. That's AJ Styles! And that's Charlotte Flair in the Mini Cooper behind me. Yes! That was a thrill. That was pretty cool. I wonder if I ever got to interview him. I wonder if I should ever mention that. AJ. What kind of cars do you like? Ooh, that would be a good. That would be a good. That would be a good fun fluff question. Nothing serious about wrestling. Like AJ, what style of cars do you like? I, I want and I want to tell you the preface to this story. Uh, he might like it. It's definitely a little fluff piece. Can't be that bad. Then eventually AJ does get the Miz into the into the calf cutter. Oh, and he got smooth. And then of course the Miz taps out, and then evil Daniel Bryant starts to attack the legs, and it kind of fades out because they're on the hard out. And uh, this was just an amazing match. This was a I want to upgrade it. This is a filet mignon match. I mean, they could have honestly had this match at WrestleMania and have it be about 10, 15 minutes longer. Everyone would be, everyone would go home happy. So that was SmackDown Live. And again, this is just such an amazing show. I'm going to take a little Yano break. And come back and talk about some Mixed Match Challenge. I'll be right back.
There we go. There we go. I hope. Oh, there we go. My camera restarts. That's better. It's always weird when you're like time delay. Wow, I still have some pages left in this notebook too. I don't know. I don't think. I don't know. I also think about doing some stuff, maybe. Ring of Honor has too wonky of a schedule. I try. They, they like their stuff up like a week after. Maybe I'll do some NXT Impact on Friday. I do miss doing three shows. No Lucha Underground kind of zonked me. Let's talk about the Mixed Match Challenge. Um, so the we have the SmackDown co competitors. We have Extreme Extreme Flair or Extreme Woo or Woo Extreme, whatever. Jeff Hardy and Charlotte Flair versus Carmella and r Truth. And I finally remembered where r Truth stole his lines from. He should be copyright violated as well. It was um he has the frames Lotty Dotty, we like to party. I'm old school. I am a hobo Tom. Public enemy said the same thing back in the day. And I should center myself better. But public enemy said the same thing. Lotty Dotty, we like to party. And he stole it from them. Boo, our truth. Boo. Carmella's wearing that little booty bathing suit. Can't boo that. But our truth, boo. You'll get boo. Oh, wait. Is it boo, our truth? Am I? Wait a second. Did I say boo, Sonya Deville? I don't think I did. Am I over Sonya Deville beating Princess Kimberly and transferred my hate, my my booze to our truth? Wow. I have to contemplate that as I'm processing this video, playing video games. Probably not playing video games tonight. Maybe part of one. Maybe I'll just set myself up for it. That's neither here or there. I'm here to talk about the mixed match challenge between Jeff Hardy and Charlotte Flair and Carmella and R Truth. It was good. There was a delete. There was like one delete. The crowds tried tried to chant it up. Um, it starts off with Charlotte Flair and Carmella, and this is pretty good. Carmella has a set of lungs on her. It's like no, don't hit me. Woo! And then, of course, there was the Chikara seven-second dance break. Um, I'm kind of over the dance break stuff. Carmella seems to be slowly checking out. Um, eventually, the the uh, both women make a hot tag. It's like a dual hot tag, which I guess is weird. Once you tag in, the other person. Way. There's no real advantage for a hot tag. Um, but then Hardy and Arn Truth, they weren't bad. Uh, Carmella, I'll, I'll, I'll give her props for this. She actually was going to sacrifice herself because Arn Truth was lying prone in the ring. Jeff Hardy was going to go for a swanton bomb. And Carmella actually kind of laid across. No! 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 Oh, no! And Jeff Hardy's like, get out of the way, get out of the way. Jeff Hardy, be a man, just swans on the both of them. You know they do that in the indies anyway. I mean, it's her fault. It'd be terrible. <laughs> but I'd enjoy it more. The crowd would be like, no, he didn't. You want to get Jeff Hardy some, some pure face heat? Yeah. I'm <laughs> swan on Carmella. Um, but then 
Charlotte pulled her off, and this led to a roll up on Jeff Hardy. Extreme Woo is out of the mix match challenge. I don't think they're going to send Carmella or our truth to the number 30 spot for their respective Royal Rumbles. So this means I almost know who's winning the SmackDown bracket. Because it's not those two. So this was fun. Um, it, was, it was good. It, was a, it didn't really stir any emotion. Probably the end did the best. It was good. It was a ham sandwich. It was fun and enter entertaining, just like the way a ham sandwich. It's it's filling, but you know what? Yeah, it'll say a ham sandwich. It was good. It's hard. It was wasn't anything spectacular. And if you've been watching the hobo and his fun wrestling show for a while, Let's see, I haven't tossed up. What the? Oh, it's old school time. <laughs> it's a ham sandwich. Actually, I like better graphics. My production value's gone up. Have to impress Daytona Beach somehow. And this is going to lead to our second match for the Raw, or I'm just going to call them the Usos, because that's, <laughs> that's really what they are. You have Naomi Uso and Jimmy Uso versus Team Asuka, which is the Miz and Asuka. And Naomi looks great with that light up fur coat. That was great. Asuka had a black thong on. So normally she wears like a multicolored. She wears like. How do I describe her bottoms? They're a shiny multicolored. Like boyfriend short, I think they're called. And she wears like normally a, like a silver or gold thong, but it kind of matches. This was like she just went straight into her luggage. Said, the only thing I've left to put on is this black thong. I'll just put that over it. It just looked weird. It didn't look Asuka ish. And then she had like the, the black thing that held up kind of. I know she has like a thigh pad on her one thigh and just kind of holds it up. It just didn't look right. I mean, you could tell it was just a black phone. At least when it's a silver or gold version, it goes with the outfit because it's sparkly, I guess, and everything else is sparkly, so it all kind of like sparkles out. This was just flat black color. Man, another thing I might not have noticed. I had a girlfriend. I like this fat for her. It's been a while. But enough about that. And um it was a it was a good match. Asuka Asuka and Naomi they can both run the ropes. Um and then eventually became uh, Jimmy Uso and the Miz, kind of dual tag in, and then and then got to a classic wrestling match. Oh, there was some great lines. I think the only bad thing about this is that they have the mics really live and really up close. Because you could like hear the spots. That was bad. I can hear the spots. If I can say, hey, he's going to pull his hair. And like, literally like five seconds later, he pulls the hair. I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. And the crowd was, was, the crowd was trying. Um, they were trying. This is all. This is awesome. And I think they were kind of mocking things. Um, at one type, uh, Jimmy Uso did go up for the splash. Of course, the Miz just crotched him. <laughs> and 
<laughs> Naomi, of course, being the dutiful wife. Good wife. You can't do that. So the miss just responds. Yes, I can. <laughs> and it was good. Again, it's very a house show esque feel. Um, it's okay. I mean, again, when you hear the spots, if you're gonna yell the spot out, at least do it in such a fashion. Hey, pull my hair as I get up. What was that? Pull your hair. Push you back to a corner, then pull your hair. Yep, that's the spot. They do that every so often in, in the indie scenes with a very snarky crowd. And the crowd actually appreciates it. They're like, no, that's not the spot. Leapfrog, duck, baseball slide, double clothesline. I thought it went duck, duck, baseball slide, leapfrog, double crossbody. Hmm, that sounds better. Let's do that second one. <laughs> and they do it, and the crowd goes, yes, yes, yes. Again, let's go into Porus and Grella and Shikara, which is a whole other beast. I wonder if PWG and Shikara ever come to Florida. Ooh. I do want to see the one promotion now that I don't have to pay $60 every three weeks. Ooh, I might do that. Next year. Definitely next year. I'm going to go a, a go wrestle match. Definitely. Maybe I should mention that to my nephews. I wonder if they would like to go. See what the indies are like. Ooh, there's an idea. One day. But I think the one thing is that this was a kind of botchy, sloppyish match. Especially when Asuka and Naomi got involved. Asuka did hit something that looked like a modified GDS. That looked nasty. Um, eventually, Naomi taps out after being stuck in the Asuka lock. The Miz and Asuka advance after... a their, their little mis miscue a couple weeks ago. It was okay. Again, nothing spectacular. Kind of botchy. This is a real ham sandwich match. And that was wrestling on this Tuesday. Although now it's Wednesday morning. Ooh, time flies. I was going to do some production stuff. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, feel free to email at hoboingirlfriend at gmail.com. And I'll see what I'm going to do about for Impact. And maybe I'll do a mixed bag of Impact and NXT. Never know. Um, it won't be a full NXT thing. It'll just be kind of a, a, a recap, or at least my review. A quick review of Impact. I haven't done that in a while. And then next week will probably be the same. Following week is going to add in on Sunday my re review of TLC. Next week, then the fall. Well. Then the following, following of the following week, which is Christmas week. So Merry Christmas, everyone. I used to say Happy Holiday. And one person says Happy Holiday. That's Holiday Harry from the land of effing holiday. Copyrighted too. Uh oh, I can't get any more copyright violations. At least not for a few more days. Then the thirty-first, I go live again. Yes, the hobo. There we go.